We're out here in the middle of nowhere, Ohio, this morning uh, doing some glassing. There's an eagle's nest out there, bald eagle's nest, all the way out there on the horizon. And then this little pond that's right in front of me, I got a white herring. Beautiful white herring. Normally what I see out here is blue herrings, but that one is white as snow. And uh, we're going to be hiking around the meadows and checking out some wooded area out here uh, this afternoon. A little bit of a day hike. Time away. Middle of fucking nowhere. I'm about to give you guys one hell of a view. Let's get to it. Some of my uh, first long distance hiking adventures was out here. I would come out here as a kid. We lived um, miles and miles off to the east. I don't know how far it is for sure. I can't remember. But I would hike out here into the meadows and there's nothing out here. This is like almost 10,000 acres of nothing but meadow and wetlands. It's just all wild. There's just nothing. There's no farming. There's no traffic, there's no humans, it's just this. Mile after mile of just this. Some of those grasses out there get thick as shit. And where I'm sitting at right now used to be a really uh, good spot to find gardener and black snakes. And I'll show you why here in a second. But we're up here on a mound. This is kind of like a lookout mound. And this, is the, this mound that I'm sitting on is actually a remnant of the pond that's right behind me. We're going to take a look at it. But this is the view, guys. This is the view. This is this was my backyard growing up. Not the uh, glacially cut area that I started my channel in. It was just wide open marshlands and grasslands and shit like this. Good hunting area. A lot of public hunting ground out here. And hunting public is a pain in the ass. And hunting season, especially shotgun season, this place is World War III. I mean, we were sitting on a road not too far from here one year. And we had just gotten out here. It was just after sunrise. We was about to set up in the woods and along a fence row. And we were getting out of the back of the trucks. We all had our fucking coffee and we're just mingling around bullshitting. Hadn't really started the hunt yet. And then, but we could hear shots off. I mean, as soon as sunrise came around, man, the shots just started. So we're standing right beside the truck and we hear what sounded like, a, damn near sounded like a bumblebee. And we see these little wisps of uh, smoke popping up from the road where a bullet, a stray bullet, was actually skipping down the road like a skipping stone over a pond. Somebody had shot and it had hit that road and it was just, that bullet was just following the road and those little puffs of smoke were where it was kicking up the limestone from the dirt. It was insane. It came within feet of about a dozen of us guys. And we stopped hunting that year. We stopped hunting this area that year. It just got too crowded with it all being public land like that. After that, we started hunting the farm and uh, the wooded areas around there. A, a couple of us boys had farmland with wooded lots on it. And we were just riding from one to the next to the next to the next. Kind of like domino through in the area. It was a good time, but I'll never forget that day when we were standing next to the truck and that bullet went whizzing by good hunting ground out here damn good hunting just a lot of people know about it you know beautiful day out here for it too let's take a look around so here's a quick view everything we're looking at we're up here on top of this mound and as i was saying there this mound is the remnants of this over here where they dug it all out they just piled the dirt up here made it into a lookout mound so that pond down there is actually pretty damn deep i don't know if there's anything in it though we're gonna be hiking out through there through that open meadow back to the woods and then we're gonna come back around that's the plan for today there ain't nothing out here y'all not a damn thing but we're gonna hike out through this field because we're gonna go treasure hunting out there we're gonna hike out through there all the way around the pond uh, back up into the woods some and uh, scout this area out just a little bit. It's going to be a bit of an adventure. Uh, you see these uh, mounds of dirt like this here? These are snakes. Snakes will uh, 
dig their hole, burrow down, start burrowing down for the winter. And they'll actually eat and push up all this fucking dirt. they shit the dirt out and make these mounds on top of their hole. If you was to uncover that and dig down in that hole or use a hook, probably pull out a black snake or a gardener snake or some shit like that. This whole field is just full of stuff like that. Here's an old rope. Back in the day, not too far from here, uh, there was a stable. That rope's in pretty, pretty bad shape. There was a stable, and this used to be a good spot for uh, coming out, bringing your horses out here, and fox hunting. So that's probably where that old rope came from, the old stable. Uh, they'd come out here, they'd bring their horses out here, quarter horses, exercise them and shit like that. And then all of these grasslands you see around here, they'd just run the horses through and run them back there through the woods, fox hunting. Fox hunting used to be a big thing around here. I don't know how well the population's doing lately, though. Yeah, that's an old rope from the old stable, though. I'll be damned. Hard telling what else is around here. Could be horseshoes, could be fucking uh, ranch equipment, tools and shit like that for saddling and setting up your horses and your tack. It's hard telling what we'll find out here. We did find a rope, though. At least a little piece of wood. Got these things everywhere. Here's a relatively new one. <laughs> Look at that. Ground around here is fairly dry, and that's still still tacky to the touch. It's still wet. They just built that one. They're all over here. There's got to be thousands of them. Like every few feet, I'm seeing one. But this is one of the freshest ones I found. But that ain't nothing but an old snake hole. Probably got one down in it right now. Hmm. Whole meadow's full of them. Yep, let's see what else we can find besides snake holes. Got a couple of uh, turkey vultures sitting on the ground back here. They're circling around a spot right there at the corner. We're going to go back and see what the hell they were up to. Might have something down back here. Following the sign, just following the sign. They're right back here in the corner, two of them sitting side by side on the ground. That's usually a pretty good sign that they found something dead and been picking on it. it. Used to be a story from way back when, being out in places like this, if you got lost and you needed to know where the damn road was, you just looked for the carrion, looked for crows, ravens, turkey vultures, that kind of thing, because usually they'd hang out near the roads looking for something that got ran over by the stagecoach or whatever it was back then. The whole mess of butterflies flying around here. I don't know how well they're going to come out, but we just walked into a swarm of butterflies. Ground's kind of moist back here. They all just landing and getting a drink. And they damn, I'm surrounded by them. Butterflies everywhere. One of our boys right there. We just gonna go back here to the corner where they were at. Start there. I ain't found nothing else except for the rope and some snake holes. We're coming up to the edge of the woods now, though. There is some sign of whitetail moving through the area, but it's very light. A little too open for them damn deer. Looks like I got a hidden meadow. A little trail running to a hidden meadow over there. Some grasslands, maybe be some more deer activity in there since it's all closed off the old trails should still be back here the old horse trails i don't know how long this area has been closed as far as the them getting rid of the uh stable and all of that i've been gone too damn long all right we got the uh buzzards flying overhead up there and they were right down in here sitting on the ground they might have just been resting. I'm not seeing a deer layer in the back here anywhere. Deer tracks. I ain't seeing no body. Nothing that they might have been picking on. They're right here, though. Hmm. And they're still circling around. They're circling all over up there. 
got something here they don't want me to find. Or maybe this is just where they was resting. Hard to say. Huh. I just ain't seeing nothing on the ground. Nothing big anyway. I'm going to watch these grassy areas. Going back into the woods for a sign of deer trail. I mean, that's probably where I'll pop in at. All right, let's keep looking. Yep, finding a little bit better deer sign now in some places where they might have gone in and out of the woods, but nothing really heavy. Nothing that really pops like this is the damn highway. Just not seeing that kind of activity here. They are running right along the edge of the woods. So it's like they're coming out here to graze a little bit, but they're not going too far out. They're just staying right here on the damned edge. But I'm not seeing any signs just yet of where they've been going in and out real heavy. I wouldn't be deer hunting the area anyway. I thought about putting a trail cam up out this way just to see what we can capture it on it. But, uh, yeah. Not a lot of whitetail activity. Everything out here is birds and snakes. Fuck those snakes. Hmm. I'll keep looking around. Start heading up towards that high grass up there. Well, not a lot back there, boys and girls. I hiked the edge. Didn't see a lot of sign. And this is this whole area back here, which I did not know, is now just sort of one section of meadow cut from another and another and another, and it just sort of honeycombs like that for ever. So it's a little patch of woods and then meadow and then little patch of woods and then meadow and it's just divided like that all the way through here that's probably why they used it for uh fox hunting back in the day wide open prairie like this easy to run the horses easy to hike i i will admit that whenever i was growing up out here long distance hiking was not an issue because it's just as you can see it's just fucking flat wide open land so the idea of getting lost out here on the grasses was next to none and the flat ground just made it for easy walking so you were talking in excess 30 40 mile hikes and that was a daily average some of my longest were in excess of 70 but those hikes were hiking from one end of the county north i was hiking from the south end of the county all the way to the north end and then back again taking back roads pastures places like this all the way through the entire fucking county and never run into a town used to do that all the time as a kid and then whenever my brother came along i'd take him hiking with me i took my sisters hiking with me a couple of times on those long distance hikes on those hikes long distance like that especially in the summertime you're usually carrying a backpack at least with some water and food in it because you do burn up a lot of fucking calories on those walks and having some water and food especially something to get your blood sugar back up help pull those days off and i'm not as young as i used to could so the idea of doing one of those long distance hikes now will probably take a little bit more consideration than they did back in high school back in high school i'd tell my dad that i was leaving friday after school i'd come back on sunday smelling like a fucking wild animal and looking like a goddamn homeless man he wouldn't give a shit he never called he never wrote he never called the sheriff and said my son is missing none of that it's just what we did out here we fucking got off of school on friday we went to the woods, didn't come back till Sunday, took a shower, went back to school. That was an everyday thing. It was just our life because there was fucking nothing else to do. And now I'm back here, and aside from work, there's not nothing else to do except be out in the woods, be out in the meadows, treasure hunting. I'm actually heading back up to where the foundation of the... Uh, old stables used to be i want to look closer around the foundation when i found this rope it sort of triggered something in my head so we're going to go up there and look around the uh, what used to be the parking area and the foundation of the stable see if we might find something laying on the ground up there you never fucking know never fucking know i got dumped and left behind back in the day been laying out here ever since i don't know the last person that's been out this fucking way I came out glassing for trumpet swans 
found a fucking albino looking white herring, a bunch of fucking snake holes, and a bit of rope that probably came from the old stable. Not bad for a half an hour's worth of time out here. I got a little bit more I'm gonna do. I really wanted to come out to the lookout mound because that lookout mound that we was up top of there at the beginning of the video, that used to be one of the uh, landmarks that I would use to know about where I was at. And you could see that damn mound for miles off because everything out here being flat, it stuck up over the high grasses. So it was a pretty good landmark. I actually filmed a YouTube video up there with a couple of friends of mine and a very beautiful girl at the top of that hill way back in the day on old lost footage. One of my trolls actually dug up that lost footage, found it for me. I had lost it. I didn't know where I left it at, but I got to see it again. That was nice. It's always nice when your enemies do all your work for you. I made so much goddamn content, I can't remember what was done on one video to the next, one channel to the next, I don't know, it just keeps going on and on and on. Never ending. And this channel here, well over a thousand videos now, it got me a fucking content empire. All I have to do is sit down and manipulate that content a little bit, refresh some of those old videos. I could probably spend a fucking year just doing that. Anyway... We about back up here to the front. I'm going to check around this area here. Not film it unless I find something. I want to be able to pay attention to the damn ground. Check out this area up here. See if anything was left behind by the folks that were here before us. Then we'll head off. See what else we can find out here in the wide open. Nothing. Alright y'all. We all had to stop here for the, uh, for the tour of the homeland. This woods back here. This one right here. Was where my dad taught me how to track white tailed deer. That was it. We would hike this fence row from, here's the road. We would hike that fence row there, and we had a tree stand back there in that corner. Uh, he'd take me back there in that corner, either put me up in the stand or let me wander off through the woods, and then the woods goes all the way over to the next road. And then we would just sit there for the longest damn time, just listening to the woods, and I wasn't allowed to talk. That was the only rule. No talking. So yeah, we, we'd walk that fence row, we'd, we'd park down that way, we'd walk that fence row all the way back to that back corner where the deer stand was, and then if they didn't come around, he'd go ahead and take me through the woods and uh, teach me how to track. Reading the sign on the ground, all of it, I learned right there in that woods. And this little cluster you see right here, that's actually a pond. And there's this one time I told this story before, I was sitting back there with my dad in the tree stand. He went ahead and sent me down, told me to come out here to the pond and just wait. He was going to run up through the woods and see if he could kick anything up to the pond. Now around that pond, over on this side, there's a, a duck blind that actually sits down into the ground. So I got to that duck blind and I got down in it. Dad wanders off through the woods and next thing I know, I hear this whistling. I didn't see nothing at first. I get down on the bank of the pond and I hear this whistle again. So I peek my head up over the edge of the bank and there's this damn white-tailed doe staring me right in the eye, nose to nose with me. She jumped back and off to the left a little bit. My ass fell straight back into the pond, which was nothing but about two inches of water and, and six inches of mud. So I splashed down into the mud. She freaks, jumps over me, ran through the pond. It's that shallow all the way over into this high grass. So that happened. That happened right there. My first face-to-face, up-close encounter with a white-tailed deer happened right there at that pond. And I damn near shit myself she was that close. Scared the fuck out of me. My dad's over there in the corner of the woods just laughing his ass off. Yeah. But this is where it happened. We got beans here, corn there. And then the meadow over here and another cornfield on the side of that little uh, briar patch area. Prime fucking hunting grounds, prime feeding grounds. That's where I learned how to track. What we're walking along the edge of here is a pretty common for uh, this area, eastern woodlands. Wide open, flat. A little bit of underbrush out there. The canopies are, you know, not too thick. These, ty these types of trees just don't get big enough to make a heavy canopy. So you get all that underbrush, the briars, the thorns, all of that shit. But this out here is where it all happened, y'all. We got the woods on this side, nice and pretty. And uh, whenever I was little, we're going all the way back to my childhood in these videos, exploring the old stomping grounds and everything. We would come out here and we would uh, 
spot deer almost every damn night. We just hop in the truck. Dad go, you, you want to go look for deer? And that was what we did after dinner. We'd all hop in dad's truck and come out here just looking for deer. Usually we never left the truck. All you had to do was cruise these damn back roads and uh, you'd spot something. But this meadow up here that we're heading to, it's right up in there, is uh, one of the primary spots where we used to spot those damn deer. You see where they got some of these trees marked for cutting because we're so goddamn close to the road. They got to cut them back away from the power lines that are over here. And get up here a little bit, get a little bit higher ground. We're, we're just walking down the road right now, y'all. We ain't, we ain't all backwards yet. You got to be transparent and all that. But yeah, this meadow right here, especially uh, early spring after the winter snows packed it all down, man, this was a hot spot for spotting deer. Hot spot for spotting deer back there. And about the same as, as where we was hiking that there a little bit ago. But yep, yeah, we'd come back here, park just right about here, and there'd be deer. Whole herds of deer back there. they come out there in those grasses, grazing and shit like that. And again, it's just prime hunting territory. This is Ohio hunting territory. You got woods, you got wild grassland meadow, and then you got bean and corn and all this other shit out here which is their primary food source, which is why our deer get so goddamn big. We got big corn-fed deer out here. And off in the distance there, I don't know how well y'all can make it out. You can see the grain tower. That's the village I grew up in. That, that grain tower is like the only business in fucking town. You either worked at the grain tower or you worked out here on one of the farms. But there was the village, and then this was the fucking backyard. Just like that. Walking down this old fucking stone road trying to get back to my truck. <laughs> this is the damn road that the bullet zipped down. It wasn't too far. We weren't parked too far down that way. The bullet came just zipping right through here because we was hunting that woods back there when Dad taught me how to track. Yeah. Good times out here. Good times. I don't know how many times I hiked this road as a kid, but I did. Anyway, guys, we just outside of the village I grew up in. Might go ahead and drive up that way and uh, get something up that way on video. You can see where I grew up <clears throat> until I moved away from home. But yeah, this was the backyard village back there. We brought this old stone road out here, and then it was nothing, 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 nothing for miles. Uh, 10,000 acres of grassland, and then you got the farmland on top of it peppered with different types of forest you got this woods behind me and it all looks about the same as that it's all the same but this is where i grew up this is about as back as backwoods gets anyway i'm gonna hop in the truck head on down the road see what else i can get myself into today you guys have a good one i'll see you next time